Hello there and welcome to the Uprising. In this video, I'll be breaking down how I created this magic energy blast effect. So without further delay, let's jump into it. I started off by creating two spheres and animating them along a path, which I created using these curves and then applied the follow path constraints to the spheres, animating the offsets and checking fixed position and follow curves. With animation done, the next step is the smoke sim. Since I was using particle advection, this was the most important step. Advection is the technique of applying motion and velocity of a smoke fluid to particles. This makes the particles take on the movement and shape of the smoke and that's how we achieve that fluid look with particles. So I had a sphere emit smoke and added a smoke flow force field also known as fluid flow force field in Blender 2.9 later. This force field is what creates the advection of the particles. I set a smoke flow to use the domain that had the smoke I wanted and then played with the strength and flow till I was satisfied with the results. The strength controls how much of the smoke's velocity the particle follows and the flow slows it down so it can better follow the smoke. I also play around with the particle's normal velocity to control how fast the particles shoot out from the spheres. And I mess with the dampening in the physics settings to slow the particles down, helping it to better follow the smoke. And with that done, we now have particles that follow the smoke, which gives us some gorgeous fluid particles. I separated this effect into different particle sims for more control over the look and motion of the effect. In this way, if I change something with a shock wave, it didn't affect the spheres and vice versa. So the particles for the sphere was one system, and then we had three more systems for the shock wave. And oh, if you like the video so far, a like from you would be smoking, and a subscribe would be particularly energized. Now for the shock waves, which I created using the same technique as the energy from the spheres. I have three separate systems for three levels of details. The main details, which were the larger ones, the medium details and smaller finer details. I do this so the effect has some more variety and a more interesting look to it. Here's how the smoke for the shockwave looks. I had it start where the sphere hits the ground and shoots out from there. I just started this object here, which is just a scaled down cylinder and this acts as the main emitter for the smoke for the shock wave. It's also responsible for the main detail particles. I displaced it slightly for displace modifier for some variation in the shape, then I animated it to scale up quickly and had the smoke use object velocity. This gave me a very explosive burst, which is the look I was going for. Then I added the particles and increased the dampening so they shot out and then slow down very quickly leaving me with particles that just hang in the air after they had cooled down. Next was this one here, which was for the medium more scattered particles. I displaced this one a lot more to get even more variation. The dampening on this one was also quite high, so that the particles will slow down almost instantly. Finally, I have a sphere which I flattened by scaling down on the Z. This is for the finer, tighter looking particles. Didn't really do much with this one as I just played with the normal velocity, the drag and the dampening till I got this finer, almost wispy looking feel to it. Add all of that and we have a cool shockwave. Note, I created collections for every stage of the process so that it was easier to manage and helped me to know exactly where I was in any stage of the workflow. So I had collection for the fluid sim, one for advection, and finally one for rendering. Finally, I put all the particles together so I can render out the final effect as one big effect. For rendering, I created a circle with eight vertices, filled it, and assigned an emission shader to it. I then used this object as the render object for the particles. Now in Blender 3.0, Geometry Nodes introduced a point cloud system which are actually perfect for rendering particles as they are fast and easy to render unlike object instances. Especially in this case when I ended up with about 3 million particles for the final render. 
Unfortunately, we can't yet render motion blur using point clouds in geometry nodes. So if you want motion blur which is kind of necessary for cool particle effects, then you have to use object instances to render the particles. And although there is a way to fake motion blur during compositing if you use the point cloud methods instead, I didn't do that here. I'll be showcasing that in a later video. So I rendered the particles, did some quick compositing in Fusion, which was basically adding some glow and color correction. And yeah, that's how I made this effect. I'll be dropping a full more detailed tutorial next week, where I'll be creating a similar effect and going more into details on my workflow, showing the relevant settings, sharing tips and tricks, and the do's and do's for creating such effects in Blender. If you'd like to see that video, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when it drops. And if you enjoyed this video or found it particularly helpful, a like would be absolutely magical. I'd love to hear your comments and suggestions, so definitely drop them in the comment section. Until next time, keep rising, make it epic.